Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to look at my very first computer, the Sinclair ZX81, also sold in the United States as the Timex Sinclair 1000. Specifically in this video we're going to look at what is and is not inside this case. I'm going to show you what it was like to use a ZX81 and we're going to look at some programs that I published years ago in these Sinclair programs magazines. So, here we have my ZX81. These launched in the UK in March 1981 from Sinclair Research and they plugged into a television to give you a monochrome 32 by 22 character display. And inside here, powering the thing, the CPU is an 8-bit CPU, a Z80 CPU, running at 3.25 megahertz. In terms of onboard memory, this has got one kilobyte, one K of RAM and it could be expanded with an external expansion pack up to 64K of RAM, although in practice very few people expanded beyond 16 kilobytes of RAM. And in terms of program storage, what you did is you took this, you connected it to a standard cassette tape recorder, so you could store programs and load programs back from cassette tapes. Now, as I said earlier in the video, there was a variant of ZX81 sold in the United States, which launched in July 1982, this was called the Timex Sinclair 1000 or the TS1000. This had two kilobytes of RAM, and you may remember I saw a TS1000 when I visited the National Museum of Computing earlier this year. Now, one of the most distinctive features of a ZX81 is the keyboard, as you can see here. This is a membrane-based keyboard, a totally flat keyboard, and uh, it did start to wear if you used it a lot, as you can particularly see looking at the shift key on my machine here. And the other interesting thing about the keyboard, it linked to the way the ZX81 saved memory in its basic programming language. And it did this by storing all of its commands and functions in single bytes. So for example, the command print was not stored as six bytes, five letters and a, and a space on the end, it was stored as one byte. And this meant that every key on the keyboard had to have lots of different functions, which you access by various shift and, and different combinations. So for example, if we look at the G key here, this had to access the GoTo command and the letter G and the LList command, which was to list programs on a printer if you've got one connected. And it had to access the absolute value function and it had a graphic symbol on the keyboard as well. And a lot of the time you spent with the ZX81 was learning the position of all the different keys on the keyboard in terms of all the commands which were available. Now, given this is an explaining computers video, I'm sure you'd like to see inside this thing. So I've taken off the screws for the case in anticipation. Now if I open the thing up, deary me, my ZX81 motherboard has escaped. Where can it be? Well, do not fear, it's inside here. This is a ZX81 expansion keyboard in case from Fuller that my ZX81 was transplanted into many, many years ago. This gives you proper proper keys as you can see, and they've got a lot of legends printed on the key, although they also had to have some legends printed on labels stuck below the key to deal with the fact you had so many different functions on the keys on the ZX81. So what I thought we'd do is have a look inside here, and I'll tell you from, from the get-go, this used to work very nicely, this contains a ZX81 and a RAM pack, and obviously this great keyboard. It doesn't work anymore, so uh, we're going to be using other means to see how a ZX81 worked a bit later on. But I thought we'd look inside here, ominous uh, sounds of the uh, things shaking about in the case. We'll just get inside. And uh, there we are, big uh, thanks to Mr. Screwdriver there. Oh, it should be the way up, I think, shouldn't it? It should be probably safer like that. And uh, there we are. There's ZX81 this. That's the way to do it, Chris. ZX81 this uh, opened up. Here we can see uh, inside the case, let's get it properly in view for you there, we've got the uh, ZX81 motherboard, we've got the ZX81's RAM pack, this is the RAM pack I, I, I got for the ZX81, it adds an extra 16 kilobytes of RAM. This was the power supply, which was of course initially cased, and then it's all connected together. And uh, what I'm planning to do here is to take this out of this case, because it's never going to work again in this case. I thought I'd take it out of here so we can put it back in its original case, so you can see it's 81 in its original state. So I now will get on with that. And here we are, the ZX81 motherboard reinserted in its original case. And we can see here very clearly the Z80 CPU, 
No need for a heatsink on a 3.5 megahertz processor, but there is a heatsink here in the case, which is a heatsink on the voltage regulator. We can also see here the UHF modulator it allows the ZX81 to be tuned into via a standard television. And other than that, there's not a lot else to really say on this board. There's no components underneath whatsoever. On the top, we've got the processor, the memory, a few control chips I imagine are there, and that basically is it. So, I now put the case back on the ZX81. You can now see clearly how it connected into a cassette recorder by these jacks on the side. Jacks there for cassette recorder in and out and for power. And on the back, there was the expansion slot where you could connect a RAM pack, a ZX printer, or potentially other peripherals. Anyway, that's basically it in terms of the hardware. Now let's get on and see what it was like to actually use a ZX81. So, my own ZX81 may no longer be functional, but I can show you how it worked using an emulator. And to my mind, the best emulator available is available on this website, zx81stuff.org.uk by Simon Holdsworth, who has kindly agreed I can show you what's on his site in this video. And Simon's pulled together an amazing ZX81 collection. If we look at just the software here, there's about 600 pieces of software. We could look, say, an index under F, and we would find the flight simulator. On the ZX81, we can go down to the program here. We could press play. It'll load into the emulator, and it will run. We'll just do that, maybe F11 to uh, get the screen fully adjusted for us, get the full effect. Do we want just a final approach? Yes. Um, do we want wind effects? No, we won't make it too complicated. And there we are, flying along on the ZX81. If I use the cursor arrows, I can presumably, oh, probably not what we're supposed to do, but there we are, I'm going wild in the, in the flight simulator. We're flying virtually on a ZX81. Now, the other great thing we can do here is we can not just do this, we can use the emulator ourselves to write programs. If I go, let's launch the emulator like that, and I'll just take it down, I think, I know it'll work best if we do that, and that, and this. So we can now see on the screen the uh, ZX81 keyboard, and obviously it's, it's screen. Now, it is mapped to a real keyboard, but I'll use the virtual keyboard on the screen here so you can see what I'm doing. And we'll write a very simple program. We have to put in line numbers, so we'll start by putting in 10 for line 10, and then we'll have a for loop. Now, when I first press the F key, it's in a command mode here, so it'll pick up the uh, command 4, and it's now changed to the L there, so if I press F again, it'll do F. I often did 4F because it was just handily on the same key. We'll have an equals, and we'll go 1. I'll shift for the function 2, and uh, 10, and then we'll press the new line. That'll put it up to the top part of our program. We'll go uh, line 20. I'm going to print, so it'll pick up again from command mode here. It'll pick up a print, and then we'll do shift and go some quotes, hello, H-E-L-L-O, no lowercase letters on the ZX81, and new line, and finally 30, we'll do a next and F to finish off the for loop, and function new line, and there we are. And uh, if we just run this, we'll go to run and uh, enter. So there we are, that's the first computer program that I ever wrote on a ZX81. In addition to writing their own programs or buying programs on cassette tapes, ZX81 users often used to type in programs from magazines like these. Here's two very early copies of a magazine called a Sinclair Programs. And some of the first things I ever published, the first things I ever wrote, appeared in these Sinclair Programs magazines. So I thought we'd take a look at those. We open up here, and there's a program over there called a Memory Test. There we are, sent in by CJ Barnett of Worcester. And I thought we'd get this typed into the emulator so we could see if we can make it work. And uh, here it is, I've been beaving away typing this in. I like the idea behind this program because the ZX81 was a very slow computer. So they gave us a command called fast, which would make it faster. And the way it made it fast was by turning off the screen. And so I thought, can we have a actual program that makes use of the fact we're going to turn off the screen? And so what this does is it sets up a load of variables, a lot of random characters are put into an array, and it displays them on the screen. It turns the screen off, and then you have to remember what you've seen and uh, press the keys on the keyboard to show what you, you remember what you've seen. And then right at the end of the program, if we just uh, flick down here with the arrows, take us a little second, let's go down to the end. Just speed through this. 
almost there. There we are, we can see on the end it goes back to slow mode so we can actually see what's going on. So let's run this exciting game. We'll run it here and it'll say, press new line to begin. So we'll press new line to begin and it'll show us a set of characters we need to remember and then we need to press keys to actually show we've seen them. Um, so that's, oh, um, I think that was a seven. I'll use the keyboard down here. Um, v, I think, was there a G? Uh, there wasn't, oh dear, there wasn't. And uh, there we are. I managed to get two there because I wasn't really paying attention and I pressed an extra G on the end to get some extra characters. So as I'm sure you can uh, agree, that was very exciting. We had really fun times in the early 1980s. You want to see something even more exciting? The uh, second program I sent them in is a program called Laser Cannon, sort of an attempt to do a Space Invaders uh, type program. There we are in nice big letters, Laser Cannon. There's the, the listing down there. They seem to quite like this one, and indeed they reprinted it in the best of Sinclair programs. And as it says, a fleet of 20 X ships is attacking you, writes C.J. Barnett of Worcester. You must destroy at least 15 of them or be destroyed. So once again, let's look at it in the uh, emulator. I've uh, typed everything in, a bit of a longer program and we'll uh, run this, there we are, and I can go up with the cursors and then go pow with a beam like that. You had to imagine the sound effects on this because there were no sound effects on the LX81, um, other than screams when you didn't type it in the program correctly and it didn't work, but uh, there we are. It's, uh, oh yes, got that one. I've got to win this game now, you know, so uh, there may be some paint drying somewhere that's slightly more interesting to watch, but no, we're not going to cut to that. We're going to keep playing this game because I want to make sure I can win. My firstly competitive streak, me against the ZX81, has now cut in. There we are, got that one. And uh, note the beam was slightly short. You had to wait till it was in range. You couldn't just, you know, get it right at the end. And uh, I think we're doing well here. It'll tell me if I'm destroyed, but uh, I think I've done okay so far. Yeah, we're all kind of get this one going down, going down. Yes! I wonder where I got the idea of X ships attacking in the early 1980s. Where could that have come from? No idea at all. Uh, there we are. And, oh no, same level. Oh, oh, I won! I've won! I even had 40 units of fuel left. I obviously thought it was important to track fuel back in 1982. Obviously, I was being environmentally friendly at the time. Anyway. There we are, you've seen some of the first programs I ever wrote and got published for the ZX81. The ZX81 had a big influence on my life, and I'll always be grateful to my parents for buying it for me all those years ago. But what about you? Were you influenced by a particular computer? If so, let us all know about it down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.